Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dark and Duels, and today you guys have been requesting like crazy for me to do a Blackwing update, and you guys know I am world famous for my Blackwing deck profiles because I am the king of Blackwings on this channel because it is my favorite deck of all time. I love this deck so much. It's one of the first competitive Yu-Gi-Oh decks that I ever built when I first got back into Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, and it's just a super fun deck for you guys to play around with. I have so many interesting tech cards in this deck to be able to play around with, and I look forward to you guys watching this video. So before we get into this, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell on the mission, become part of the notification squad, and let's get straight on into this awesome Blackwing deck profile. So, first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Blackwing Simo the Poison Wind, which is one of the best cards in the entire deck. And it has the ability that basically you reveal, if you control no monsters, you can, and this card's in your hand, you banish a Blackwing monster in your hand, special summon this card, or excuse me, place a Black Whirlwind from your deck onto your field, normal summon this card. Then you get, get to trigger the Black Whirlwind, add a Black Wing from your deck to your hand, and since this card was normal summoned by its own card effect, it doesn't count towards your normal summon, which is really cool the way it's worded. So you get two normal summons that turn, which gets you two searches off of it. But the only thing that's kind of a downside to this card is that you have to send the Black Whirlwind to the graveyard during the end phase, and you take a thousand points of damage. So it doesn't stay on the field because that'd be a little broken, and it does you do take a stack. So, not that big of a deal. Then we play three copies of Chris the Crack of Dawn. Um, this card, if you control a Blackwing monster other than this card, you can special summon this card from your hand, and once per turn, it can't be destroyed by uh, card effects of spells and traps, which is really cool. I see a lot of people playing two of this card. I think they're wrong. I think you need three copies of this card because it helps you climb the ladder. If you open this card and, like, a copy of Black Whirlwind, you can really go for Simo or search something that you need to be able to synchro into another monster like Gale uh, and go Armor Master to be able to go in defense if you're getting pushed to go first. Or if you're going in late game and you have a Whirlwind on field and you top deck this, if you ever top deck in this deck, you can summon something like Raikiri and just be able to OTK your opponent, which I've done many a times. So this card's really good to be able to have in the deck. Three copies of Bora the Spear. Bora the Spear is just basically piercing damage, and you can special summon it from your hand if you control another Blackwing monster. One of the best cards in the deck. Like, you're looking at some of the best cards in the deck right here. Three copies of Gale. Gale the Whirlwind is really good in the deck, too, because you can special summon this card if you control another Blackwing monster. And then you can target a monster once per turn your opponent controls and half its attack and defense, which is really good. Um... I really love that effect of being able to just half attack and defense instantly. That's really good in this deck because this guy can OTK out of nowhere um, and make full armor master, which is basically towers, uh, unaffected by everything, and rivals ultimate falcon, in my opinion. Uh, three copies of Oster the South Wind. Oster the South Wind is really a good card in the deck, too. It can be special summon, which kind of is a bummer, but it also has the ability that when this card is normal summon, you can target one of your banished Blackwing monsters that's level 4 or lower, and then special summon in defense position, and then you can manage this card from your graveyard to either place Black Feather counters on one Blackwing Dragon equal to the number of cards your opponent controls, or place a Wedge counter on each face-up monster your opponent controls. Um, that doesn't have one, which is really good. And this card combos really well. If you open this and Simo, you're going to go into all sorts of awesome plays. All you need to open is a level four Blackwing, Oster, and Simo, and you're going to be able to go into anything that you want to go into. Or a Simo and a level four Blackwing monster is also really good to be able to go into. Um, if you just open like this and a Bora or this and a Chris, you have so many plays. Um, for the one ofs that we're playing in this deck, I'm playing a single copy of Zaphros the Elite. Yes, I still have my German one. You target a card you control, put it back in your hand, pay, or you inflict 400 points of damage to yourself, and then special summon this card from the graveyard. Really good effect, really good to have that extra monster on board, and it's a good one of in the deck. Ga uh, Gallus, the Midnight Sun. If you only control one Blackwing, you can special summon this from your hand. It's good for wombo combos. If you have this in your hand and then have one Blackwing, normal summon the Blackwing to search like anything off of Whirlwind and then special summon this and then special summon the Blackwing you searched and then use this and the Blackwing you searched to synchro. But it's a really good comeback card as well. Steam the Cloak, we just play as a one of. Uh, steam is if it's removed from the field, every time it's removed from the field, you put a steam token on the field, and then you contribute the steam token 
or you can tribute any monster you control to special summon this card from your graveyard, but you can only special summon from the graveyard once per duel. A single copy of Hamat in the Dust, special summon to your side of the field if you control another Blackwing monster, and then it also has the ability that you can target a Blackwing monster and increase this monster's level by the targeted monster. So you can target something like your Chris the Krakadon and make this card a level 6, which is really good to be able to synchro with. And it helps out with being able to synchro in all sorts of different scenarios. A single copy of Blizzard. I only play a Blizz one Blizzard because you can normal summon it to target a Blackwing monster in your graveyard and special summon it in defense solution that's level 4 or lower. It's good as a one of or a comeback card later in the game, but you don't want to open it anymore. One copy of Oster. Oster is really good as a level 1 tuner monster as well. Uh, it's You really only ever search it like one time. It's okay to open, but I don't want to open it. And it's it's good, but it's not great. It's a good level one tuner monster to be able to go from Nuthung into any other Blackwing monster, or do the old Nuthung um, Hawk Joe combo where you get Hawk Joe and Nuthung both on the field off of a level four, a level three in this, or a level four, or a you can if you have Blizzard and Oster in the hand, and you have a level four in the graveyard, you can normal summon the Blizzard, special summon a Blackwing from the graveyard that's a level four, synchro the uh, Blizzard in the level 4 for Nuthung, and then instantly special summon out the Orsha, and then go from Orsha and Nuthung into Hawkjo. Hawkjo brings back Nuthung, which is really a good combo to be able to do. And then we play three copies of Ash Blossom to be able to just stop our opponent from doing all sorts of stuff against us. So, good, good card to have. So, that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So, for the spells, we're going to be playing three copies of Allure of Darkness for draw power. You just need the three copies of Allure of Darkness because everything in the main deck is dark except for Ash Blossom. So, just a really good card overall for digging into the deck. Three copies of Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave is another one of those cards that you need to stop your opponent from hand trapping. And yes, I do have the Prismatics. I did hollow out Black Wings as best I could. Um, three copies of Black Whirlwind because it's the best card in the deck. When a Blackwing is normal summoned, you can add another Blackwing from your deck that has less attack points than the one you just normal summoned. So it's a really good three of in the deck. You never play this at anything less than three. If you play it at less than three, you're not playing Blackwings correctly. So that's it for the spells, guys. And this is not once per turn, by the way. So if you get multiple normal summons, like with Nuthung and Simone, uh, Simone, it's just really nutty. So then we play... Two copies for the traps, guys. We're playing double black Sonic because the only time that Armor Master gets dies is if you ha don't have black Sonic. Black Sonic makes this card invincible. It's unaffected by all their card effects, and then black Sonic protects it from being destroyed by battle. And I don't understand why people don't play more black Sonic. Like, I bumped this card to two because it is the only card that can protect full Armor Master besides something like Storming Mirror Force or something like that. And at that point, I'm not even that worried about it. Basically, if an opponent's monster declares an attack on a Blackwing monster you control, you banish all face of attack monsters your opponent controls. If you control exactly three Blackwing monsters and no other monsters, you can activate this card from your hand. So they can't even, like, stop it with Twin Twisters or anything like that before they battle. And not many people are main decking Twin Twisters anymore because of Altergeist getting hit with Multifaker. So you don't have to deal with that many back row based decks anymore. So they're just siding it. So then we play two copies of Blackbird Close. Blackbird Close is another really good counter trap that when an opponent's monster activates its effect, um, you can send a face-up Blackwing monster you control to the graveyard to spell summon a Blackwing dragon from your deck and negate the activation of the monster and destroy it, which is really, really, really cool, but it has to have a monster on the field to activate it. It's a good counter trap, and if you control a Blackwing Synchro Monster or Blackwing Dragon, you can activate this card from your hand so they can't stop it. It's a Speed Spell 3 counter trap, which is really good in the deck. And then for the last three cards in the main deck that I play, I play three copies of Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Eradicator Epidemic Virus is nuts. Um, I don't know why people are not playing this as three ofs in this deck. I highly encourage you to play this as a three of, because you tribute a monster that has 2,500 or more attack. Um and then target spells or traps, and, or call spells or traps for the next three turns, you just, your opponent can't have spells or traps, period. Um, and every time they draw, you do get the knowledge of that, which is really cool, um, because it specifically says that they have to reveal it. With stuff like Mind Crush, they don't have to reveal it, but with this, they do, because it specifically says they have to reveal it. 
Um, I actually won an ARG off of this card because I resolved it multiple times. And if you guys want to see that ARG live duel, I do have the final. It's been a little while. I think it was been about like six months ago, but I did win an ARG with this card and Black Wings, which was really cool in the finals. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're playing two copies of Black Wing Full Armor Master. Yes, you can go into two copies of this card really easily on the first turn. Um, basically, it's unaffected by all their card effects, and each time your opponent activates a, a monster effect, you get to place a wedge counter on that monster. And then after this card resolves, once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls with a wedge counter and take control of it. And then during your in phase, you can destroy all monsters that have wedge counters. Really good effect, really big, and the only way that you're going to get rid of it is destroying it by battle, which is why I play Black Sonic. One copy of Blackwing Dragon to special summon off of the Blackbird Close. It can do burn damage and prevent you from taking burn damage, which can be kind of nice against stuff like Mystic Mind Burns and stuff like that, which not many people are playing Mystic Mind Burn that much anymore, but it's still there if you need it. I play two Obsidian Hawk Joes because I feel like the double Hawk Joe is better than not. I have some builds that I'm not playing double Hawk Joe, but I feel like the two of really comes in clutch sometimes um, and really can make the difference in the game. Um, it revives level 5 or higher wing beast monsters, and if it's targeted for a card effect, you can target another black wing you control instead. Um, Raikiri, the rain shower. Raikiri just be, lets you pop uh, cards on the field equal to the number of black wing monsters you control. Other black wing monsters you control, so if you have a board full of black wings, you can just detach, you can just, you know, call, you can just pop all the things on the field. Like if you have four on field, uh, plus him, you can pop four cards on the field. Uh, Chidori. Chidori is so good because it gets so big. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Late game going into Chidori. It's really good to be able to go into Chidori. Because you can go into this card. It, it, I've won so many games with this card. It gains 300 attack for each Blackwing monster that's in your graveyard. And then when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target a Blackwing type synchro monster in your grave and then special summon it. So, like, if, if you... If you put this on board and then it gets destroyed, usually what you're going to do is go to Full Armor Master first and then make this second is what I normally do. And then you have these four as utility. So Full Armor Master on field gets destroyed or gets destroyed by battle. And then you make this to get over whatever destroyed Armor Master. And then after you get over what destroyed Armor Master and this gets destroyed, if it goes that far, you just put Full Armor Master back on the field and then your opponent's usually not going to have something that gets bigger than Armor Master anyways. Um, speaking of Armor Master, we played as one of, it can be destroyed by battle, and you take zero battle damage from battles involving it, and when a monster battles it, you put a wedge counter on that monster, and then you can pull the wedge counter out to reduce the monster to zero attack. I play a single copy of Nuthung, it's my level 6 synchro in the deck. You, when it's synchro summoned, you target a monster opponent controls, reduce its attack to, by 800, and then inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent, and it gives you an additional normal summon every single turn, which is really good. Um, one copy of Beals. Beals is really good because a lot of decks don't have outs to this, so you play put Beals in defense, and it's like, oh, it can't be destroyed, and it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects, and you're gaining life once every time I do damage to you? Okay, that's fair. Um, Ice Beast Zero Find to negate all cards on the field, and it gets really big, and it's really easy to go into this with, like, Bora and Chris. Um, really good card to be able to go into, and it's not affected by Full Armor Master, or Full Armor Master is not affected by it, so it's really good to put this on board with Full Armor Master. Um, and it gains 300 for every monster, or every face of card that it negates, or every face of card on the field when it activates its effect by detaching material. Exiton Knight to blow board if you need it. Boral Sword to OTK. Um, and then two Wee Witches, because everything in the main deck is dark, and everything in the extra deck besides Ice Beast and Exiton Knight is dark, so it's really good to be able to boost them all by 500. The only down part about this card is that Full Armor Master does not gain the 500 because it's unaffected by all card effects, not just your opponents, which sucks. So, that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. It is, hands down, my favorite deck of all time. I love this deck. I have hollowed it out as best I can, except for the Eradicators. I really wish that they released the rest of the Blackwing monsters in hollow, like Hamaten and um, Hamaten and Oster are the only ones that are not hollowed. So I really wish that they would release those in hollow forms, and I'd be good, and everything would be hollowed. Um, so anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell, and then you can come part of the notification squad, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.